Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name is Dawn and I'm from the SLS office. Thank you so much for taking time today from your busy schedule to join us for the SLS live stream. Um, you can see with me today here, uh, Ms. Sui and Ms. Surya. Um, they will be sharing the virtual learning journeys that they have conducted using SLS. So without, um, without much delay, let's just begin and jump right into the first lesson. Uh, so on my left, Ms. Sui will now share her lesson on conducting a virtual learning journey to Hong Kong. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Sui from Corporation Primary School. Uh, my inspiration to organize such learning tour for my students comes from my desire to actually provide a immersive and also interactive learning experience for the students. So by visiting the Hong Kong, the students are able to explore the rich culture in the Hong Kong and also learn something that is beyond their classroom and also textbook. Uh, other than that, as a mother tongue teacher, I also hope to provide them and opportunities to practice their language skill in real world setting so to make the learning comes to life so by um, organizing this virtual tour and with just some ICT tools on hand it helped me to mitigate the barrier and also the it, it helped me to it helps me to uh, mitigate the distance and also the cost barrier mm -hmm. so yeah I think ICT opens up a lot of opportunities for the students and also for our teaching. So perhaps uh, let me share about uh, my consideration while designing this lesson. So uh, one of the main consideration of mine is to make the whole virtual trip more engaging and more interactive for my students. Uh, there are a few SLS tools as well as the ICT tools that I will recommend for teachers to try out. Uh, the first one is a uh, Google Arts and Cultures. All right, so I have the students to explore the uh, some of the iconic uh, places in Hong Kong using this Google Arts and Culture. Then the students are able to view the building and also the street view in 360 degree. After that, I have the students to write down uh, what they know about Hong Kong and what they want to learn about Hong Kong in SLS ITT so that I am able to identify their learning needs and also their learning interests and communicate this learning needs to the tour guide. Other, Other than, than that, that, I have, have this uh, check-in check -in activity, activity for, for the students. The students have, have to go to this uh, Changi Airport Flight Tracker website to find out what is, uh, when is the next flight to Hong Kong and also which counter to check in and which boarding get to go. Uh, the students were really excited about this. So yeah, to make the whole virtual trip more interactive and more engaged for the students, I use this SLS click and drop function. Okay, so to design an activity for the students to have their passport sent by the immigration before they drive the June uh, tour with the Hong Kong tour guide. So throughout the tour, the Hong Kong tour guide will bring the students from one place to another place uh, in Hong Kong. And there is also another facilitator in the Zoom. The students are able to ask some of their questions through the Zoom chat. Because uh, for my students, they have one-to-one -one devices. So this is actually to make their learning more interactive as they can ask the question using the Zoom chat. Other than that, after the entire trip, uh, we have this Kahoot quiz to assess the student learning. Then when they, when they come back from the virtual trip, I have two assignments for them. Uh, one is on the gen board and another uh, on the Canva. For this, uh, these two assignment, assignment, the students have to work collaboratively to produce, to create a one day and, and one day itinerary about Hong Kong. So I download all their itinerary and put up on SLS forum for them to work for which itinerary they will join or they prefer. So I think this is the whole idea of my, of my lesson. Yeah. So um, thank you, Suhui, for sharing. I think what was really admirable about Suhui's lesson was that she managed to pull together um, different resources and different ICT tools and actually embed them on SLS. So um, 
what that what that actually does is um, I imagine it would help the students to go along the lesson a lot uh, more easily since everything is on um, SLS. Um, yeah, I thought about <laughs> something that's very important. Okay. So throughout the whole trip, I, I actually uh, took a few pic, uh, photo of the students. So uh, by using the latest feature in SLS, which is the Google integration, so mm -hmm. I put up the students' uh, photo in the Google slide and share it. Uh, share the photo with the students in SLS so mm -hmm. the students can actually view their photo in SLS directly. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. yeah. So I think in addition to that, what I also like was um, in addition to just using the lessons, they actually, or the students could actually participate within the SLS forum itself. So I think that is something that we, when, we can actually consider when we author our lessons in future. Uh, moving on, um, let's hear from Ms. Surya. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Surya. I'm from Fafi Methodist School Primary. Uh, so basically my lesson is actually a Primary 4 Social Studies Virtual Learning Journey to Singapore River. So actually it's not just a Social Studies project but it's more of a collaboration between the English Department and the Social Studies Department. Mm. Okay. Uh, so basically uh, this is just um, uh, the intent of this learning journey is also uh, is an extension to what the students learn in class because mm -hmm. uh, basically for primary four social studies they learned about early settlers and how they have been contributing to our society the impact they have left for us mm -hmm. so uh, I think um, every level we usually uh, visit a, a particular location okay and uh, for primary four we decided to uh, head to civic district. Mm -hmm. uh, so previous pre-COVID, we've always had that opportunity to actually head out and like be, be um, mm -hmm. in those locations so that students can see it with their own eyes, like mm -hmm. how, this, how this, uh, the, these places actually has evolved over the years and uh, how the um, early settlers came to Singapore and how, how they have con uh, been contributing to, to Singapore uh, over the years. But however, when you know, COVID strikes and then like, you know, restrictions were put in place, there's no way we can head out. So mm. we were thinking how we can actually still have that um, experiential learning for our students mm. uh, without heading out. So um, at, uh, it just coincidentally uh, for my school, uh, one of our English program, uh, actually we actually do have um, a group of student ambassadors. Uh, so for pre-COVID, they have been uh, always been um, conducting tour tours around the school, outside as well. So it's thinking, oh, since they can't head out themselves as well, so we think, oh, how about they do an in-house in-house project with us so uh, how we have uh, engaged them is we actually got them to be our tour guide for our primary four students instead yeah so they have been working um, for a couple of months on how to create content uh, what are some of the uh, information that they should uh, deliver uh, and share with a fellow primary four students mm. yeah so um, it was um, very interesting one because I think the students themselves, were, they felt confident, they actually were very excited that they actually had that opportunity to share and also apply certain skills, RC skills that they have learned mm -hmm. uh, in, in the previous years and, um, and the audience that they are actually um, um, interacting with is also their peers. So I think it's not that daunting for them. Uh, so they were very excited and they were uh, um, very confident in the throughout the whole whole project, yeah. So um, so uh, then we were thinking, oh, how how we can then uh, integrate the videos that they have created uh, when they were sharing about the different places in uh, within the civic district and actually um, um, show it to their to the primary four students. So we were thinking, oh, how about SLS then? Mm. And uh, we we are very much aware that SLS has different. Uh, components and activities mm. that we can use you know to actually uh, assess students learning okay so one of the some of the tools that we uh, we actually consider using uh, is like interactive thinking tool okay so um, uh, I think interactive th thinking is a very strong tool where students can actually um, look at their friends responses and respond because I think we're also trying to minimize contact so this is a very great tool you know they can they can still in somehow interact with their friends and respond to you know the, the responses of uh, that they were given by by their friends mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, ITT is one of the main tools that we actually use in this whole learning journey mm -hmm. uh, another uh, tools that we use is uh, to assess their own self-learning is like MCQs mm -hmm. polls um, free response questions because I think uh, 
there are certain questions that we want to also hear uh, from the students, uh, not just like limiting themselves by the options that we give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course we do. We ended off the 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 whole learning journey with actually uh, a one activity which we did not use the SLS tool, mm -hmm. which uh, we, they actually created postcards uh, for their friends. So what they have learned during the learning journey, they actually, we actually provided, we provided them a, a postcard where they actually pen down what they have learned during the learning journey. And then we actually gathered the postcards back from them and we actually post the postcard. Oh. So they need to know like their friend's address. So we actually provided them, okay, you just, we pair them up. Uh, so we gave them the address of their friend and they pen down what they have learned and then uh, we actually make the uh, liberty to actually help the students to post the postcard and the students were very anxious, they were, they were looking forward to receiving the postcard so when they got the postcard they actually shared everything, oh we received our postcards mm -hmm. you know, now. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes the whole uh, learning journey very interesting Yeah, because I think postcard uh, it ties in together with um, um, the profession of um, letter writers, uh, mm. where you know early the early settlers, that because we have a group of illiterate, you know, uh, yeah. uh, settlers yeah. and also those those uh, non illiterate. So we we want just wanted to them to uh, put themselves in the shoes mm. of the letter writers and say mm. and also know how they can con can they can contribute to to, to people around them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So all in all, that was um, the lesson that we actually created on using the uh, using SLS. Yeah. Mm, so I think a couple of things we can learn from Surya here. Um, I really enjoyed the the co-creation of this virtual learning journey that um, the school actually embarked on with the students. I think that is something that we can all learn from to not just um, deliver fro to students as teachers, but include them, including them in the process of our lesson authoring. Mm -hmm. And what I also um, got reminded of was no matter what kind of tools we use in SLS, whether it's MCQ, free response, or even like Google integration, seemingly simple tools can actually be very, very powerful as long as we are very clear about um, what we are trying to get out from the lesson itself. Uh, and the third thing that I really liked was how they actually use um, SLS to enhance the learning of students. So I think Surya mentioned about the postcards that were eventually mailed to the students. I thought, I thought that was very interesting. And if I were a student myself, I would, I would really enjoy and anticipate, you know, receiving the postcards. Mm -hmm. So perhaps one consideration, if if I really wanted to put everything on SLS, I would consider then using the forum. Uh, where the students can actually um, post uh, comments, they can also use the poll functions, or even use the drawing tool within SRS to design their postcards. Uh, that, that's if we wanted to put um, everything within SRS and keep it uh, entirely virtual. Mm -hmm. So uh, moving forward, I think we've heard from both teachers about really the, the ways that we can help students to discover beyond the four walls of the classroom, which is actually very powerful in um, experiential learning. But we also want to look ahead and think about SLS in the very, very far future. So I'm going to invite our two uh, guest speakers to use the SLS drawing tool to really draw out what they imagine SLS can be like for us in the far future. And for those of us joining from home, you can scan the QR code on the next screen and you can join the pigeonhole and really um, feel free to contribute what you think SRS might look like uh, in the far future. So we'll take about two minutes. Um, you will be able to see the teachers drawing live. So please take the two minutes to contribute on pigeonhole and we will be back in two minutes. And teachers, please go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, this is the best I can do. <laughs> Draw.
also to our viewers at home, um, when you are on Pigeon Hole, you can upvote uh, following comments. Uh, so you can vote for the ones that you can uh, that you resonate with, and uh, we'll take a look at the pigeon hole after the teachers explain what they've done uh, with the drawings. Um, all right, maybe we'll start with Miss Surya. Yeah. Uh, so you can see um, on your screen that she has drawn a VR and an AR drawing, uh, yeah. which I will leave her to explain. Yeah, so basically, um, still aligned to um, this whole learning journey yeah. uh, project. Mm. Uh, so currently, we've, uh, what we did was when we actually got the students to do, uh, it's more of a recording, so there's green screen at the back. Yeah. So when we did the post editing, it's more of like uh, in inclusion of uh, the, the, the videos. Mm. Um, so moving forward, of course, we do look forward, um, we want to focus a little bit more on immersive learning, like what Sir mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity of uh, students um, being part of the whole uh, virtual reality where they actually can have that device mm -hmm. and then they see their their friends, the water tour guide, mm -hmm. in, in that location. Like, right. yeah, and, and everything is... Of course, we don't need uh, a separate um, uh, platform that we can actually use to create this whole... Uh, Virtual learning, virtual reality uh, project, mm. uh, or alternatively, we can also look into AR, uh, where probably there's a certain function that we can actually have mm. on SLS, mm. where we can create this um, whole um, AR um, outlook, you know, that mm. we can actually, uh, yeah, uh, leverage on, and uh, and and I'm sure when it comes to virtual reality and AR, it's, it's also a uh, it's a futuristic learning as well, you know. Mm. We, always, we always look into how we can actually uh, get get to use all these tools mm -hmm. uh, and, and not only to experience the fun, the joy of learning, but also, mm. you know, the whole intent of the purpose of using VR and AR. So, uh, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a big thing. I think most people are also going into this. So, we, I really hope that we can actually have this um, mm. function mm -hmm. in, in SLS. Mm. So, we don't really have to, like, you know, uh, what we did, like, you know, recording, and then we have to, like, d download the videos and then put it out on SLS, that, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it's just more of, uh, yeah, it's just a wish list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like, it sounds like, um, it could even be like a metaverse kind yeah, of thing, you know, yeah, where the right. students maybe exist as avatars yeah, online and yeah. then they, they get to interact with each other, right? Sure, because yeah. I think, um, students love to engage in that manner, mm, right? So, yes. so yeah, it does, it does sound very cool and <laughs> very futuristic and yeah. I'm very sure students will, will jump to, you know, like, participate yeah. in that kind of, in that kind yeah. of learning environment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. move on to Si Hui. Um, she has a very cute drawing and I'll leave <laughs> her to, to explain it. Okay, pardon for my drawing, but I will explain. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I envision SLS as an integrated uh, learning and teaching hub for the students uh, in coming three to five years with this AI, artificial intelligence. Mm. So in my drawing, right, you can see two person. That is, that is actually the teaching companion and also the learning companion for the teachers as well as for the students. Mm. All right, so when the student log into the SLS, perhaps they will have one planner. So in this planner, the students can create their own study plan and their learning companion will recommend some of the resources for them. To, uh, this is actually to personalize their learning experience. Other than that, uh, perhaps when the students is trying to do their work, if they face any difficulty, they can also activate this learning companion. Uh, there are maybe uh, different type of support uh, given to the students. Uh, for example, um, if the students cannot answer the question, level one support will be to give the students some of the responsive scaffolding 
or tips or hints to help them to answer the question. Mm. If the students still cannot answer, perhaps uh, level 2 support will come in uh, to give them the answer and also to explain the uh, steps to them. Mm. However, if the students still, still cannot answer the question, <laughs> okay, so this uh, learning companion will suggest uh, the student to give a call out to his teacher and to schedule a consultation hour or consultation slot with the teachers online. So, yeah, this is for the uh, student part. For the teachers, they have this uh, teacher companion, teaching companion. So what can this teaching companion do is, is quite cool, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the teacher uh, teachers can actually import our timetable and also our, and also our SOLA bill into this, uh, uh, and send to this teacher companion. Then this teacher companion can also uh, recommend some of the materials, teaching materials for the teachers and also help the teacher to generate their lesson plan. Besides, uh, perhaps, uh, if teacher is using the hard copy worksheet, so they, uh, the teacher can consider to scan the worksheet and for this uh, teaching companion to mark for the teachers and also to analyse the data for the teachers so that the teachers can identify the students' learning gap and use the uh, data to adjust their next uh, teaching strategy. If this uh, teaching companion is smart enough, perhaps uh, the teacher can also uh, ask the teaching companion to help them to do the paper writing and also to <laughs> identify the difficulty of the uh, exam paper. Then, as you can see on top of this, I have this uh, SLS, SLS course space for the uh, students. What is this? This is actually a space uh, that secure all the productivity and also collaboration too for the students to work collaboratively. As you can see, there's this uh, green color triangle LHL. This one is actually uh, the learning hub and learning lab for the students. Like what uh, Sulia mentioned just now, we have this AR and also the VR uh, uh, in the, I mean the technology. So when the students uh, go to this learning hub and learning lab, they are able to uh, use the resources that the teachers or some of the uh, pedagogical experts has designed using the simulation to do, their self, uh, to do their learning. Imagine the teacher is teaching the concept or maybe human organ with a 3D scanner and the model is floating in front of the students. I think that's quite amazing and quite cool. Okay, so we move to another part. There is this uh, virtual meeting room. Okay, so the students in a group can actually book this virtual meeting room to discuss their uh, assignment. And we have this virtual mentor to provide the guidance and also the feedback for the students. And their discussion can be uh, recorded, rec recorded and the teachers can also provide more specific feedback when they listen to this uh, recording. And at the bottom, I have this Pinterest. So teacher and the students can put up their work uh, to display in the Pinterest for peer learning and also the peer comments. Yeah, I think that is the whole idea of my drawing. Yeah. I think um, a lot of teachers will get behind the teaching companion idea yeah, where yeah, idea. yeah if 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 um, our papers can be vetted <laughs> for us, right? I think it, it will really help us with our productivity. Um, but we would also um, like to or rather what I have caught on from both teachers are um, they are really trying to pull current technologies and try and integrate it into SLS itself which um, will later on be very powerful in helping um, both teachers and students uh, whereby SLS could be a one-stop hub like what uh, Suhi said uh, for, for, for all or rather for different modes of learning, different contexts, whether or not it is um, in school, whether we are trying to enact a lesson at home or perhaps during um, home-based learning days, that uh, such technologies can support whatever kind of learning or whatever kind of purpose that we are trying to achieve. Uh, we are now going to move on to the, to the pigeonhole uh, to look at some of your comments. So I think the first 
The first one is um, on SLS using um, the AR concept like Pokemon Go for PE lessons. Um, I, I do wonder if a PE teacher wrote this, <laughs> uh, where they can uh, collect SLS Pokemon and level up as they increase the number of steps. So this is actually quite similar to what yeah. Yeah, Syria said, right? About um, incorporating a VR or AR into SLS so that um, students can have a more immersive kind of learning. And I think that is uh, winner gets a gym badge. So yeah, so I think that is quite cool because we do want the students to you know, have a sense of achievement as well, yeah. you know, through, through their learning and really help them to progress um, through the lesson without feeling like um, they are just going through the motion. So um, on that note, the gamification features uh, on SIS now, we also yes. um, are able to give achievements. So please, please do consider trying that out. Uh, okay. The next one, form teachers who are not teaching the students be able to change password for the students. Um, we will take this as feedback. Um, it, is, it is always something that we try to balance, you know, um, creating new features or enhancing current features. So we are going to actually, um, we'll, we'll take this back as feedback and perhaps um, you can see it somewhere in the far future. Um, can we move on to the next um, students? Students can use XP. Oh, students can use the XP yes. they have earned to redeem healthier choice bubble oh, tea with cool. or fries with no sauce. Yeah. So this is quite cool because yeah. um, it sounds like partnership with um, between different different uh, stakeholders. So SIS and maybe even um, yeah, like bubble tea shops yeah. or, or fast food restaurants. Yeah, I think. Yeah, like yeah, I think they will read. I mean, I think even teachers will like it. Yeah, yeah if we can redeem <laughs> bubble tea or fries. And um, perhaps, perhaps SLS can somewhat serve as a job aggregator or search engine that can connect students to potential hires as internships during their holidays. Okay, so um, right now we do have the My Skills Filter um, app integrated into SLS and definitely I think we also want to think far ahead so hopefully we will see something um, similar uh, with the same concept in the far future. Uh, so yeah, and Sarah, do you have anything to, to, to comment on at, at the moment? Yeah. Uh, so I know we are moving forward, we are yeah. moving backwards. We yeah, we are going to try, we are going to try. It's a combination of technical stuff as well as like, you know, uh, improvement of what we already have in SLS. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. so. I mean, certain things like fingerprint, face recognition, I think because we are just going um, align, I mean, uh, together with what we already have, like, you know, the devices that we use, I mm. think it's just more of convenience and to uh, speed up certain processes. Because yeah. mm -hmm. like for students, we do, for me, we do experience sometimes students say, uh, okay, I don't, forgot my password and everything. Mm. So it's always, I think it's more of like, uh, sometimes in, in, in class, we, we do want to, uh, we treasure every single minute that we have in class. Uh, mm. So I think this is just some of the consideration that, yeah, um, maybe the SLS thing can, <laughs> can think of. And I, 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 I resonate SLS with what, what they actually, mm, mm, mm. yeah, they actually suggested, yeah. Yeah, what was uh, For me, I think that if we have an open link, open SLS link, that will be better for lower primary mm. students mm. because it will save the, stu uh, the teachers the trouble to help the students to log into SLS. And also, uh, just now we mentioned about the learning beyond the classroom. So mm. when we bring the students out to another country or outside for virtual learning, for learning tour, I think that an open link will be more feasible for the students as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So um, I think what I, I do have to, to address the um, open, open link concept. So, I think at SRS, we also try to, to balance user needs as well because that is important to us. So we do want to um, balance ease of use as well as security issues. So we always, um, we will strive to really try and ensure that um, users do not have their internet security compromised. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, we want to make sure that, you know, it is 
um, easily used by all our students, especially um, I believe for lower primary yes, students yes, where they yes. might need a little bit more guidance. So yeah. um, thank you, thank you for your yeah, feedback. May, maybe an app so that they can use their fingerprint or face mm. recognition yeah. to log in. I think that will be good. Yeah, so I think yeah, I think Sihui, you can also contribute to the Fijian Home <laughs> about using about using fingerprint and you know face ID. Uh, we do have we can actually look at one more comment. Uh, perhaps um, okay. Uh, SLS has a chat GPT AI chat bot. Ah, that students can interact with and point them to useful learning resources. So this, this comment actually sounds like what Su Hui said, um, to have a learning companion for um, students, um, which is something that we do envision SLS to have in the far future. I think with AI, um, one of the very powerful um, support that we can give the students is really personalised resources, yeah. right, as well as personalised feedback but at the same time we also want to help teachers you know by um, ensuring that our productivity is still it, it is it is not compromised or it's not jeopardized so having a learning companion like um, like that would be really really helpful and I imagine um, at the moment in schools I, I do wonder if um, you have anything like do you have personalized feedback or any I think for English because we do have we leverage on like a certain function on mm. Microsoft PowerPoint where oh, they actually for okay. oracy like practicing of oral mm. and like just uh, so it's about a little bit of uh, AI mm. involvement there. Okay, yeah, it's okay. more of like self learning when they practice their reading aloud. Mm. Uh, so are the certain things that they have to look out for in terms of accuracy of the the reading mm. pronunciation mm. of certain words. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so we we do have that. Uh, Opportunity to actually, uh, yeah. So I think uh, we did use it for lower primary, if I'm not wrong, last year. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So we ha we we really like that because it's it's like we teachers we don't have to be physically there. Mm, mm. Uh, students can do it like by their own at home and as well. So it's it's quite cool. Mm. 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 How about mm. uh, for, for me, the... I am okay for mother tongue language, yeah. right? Okay, I am using the SLS, uh, the speech evaluation, mm. the learning adapt. Uh, Adaptive learning system in SLS to evaluate the students' reading mm, fluency. Mm, mm. Yeah, so I think that's quite good. It really uh, helped me to save my time because uh, the SLS will be able to identify the students' uh, fluency and also uh, provide them with a mark. Mm, yeah. Mm. So I, I believe um, as we use these systems more and more and we train, mm. you know, we really train the system to be more and more accurate and with a lot more precision, it's going to be a very helpful tool for all the teachers, especially language teachers, yeah, yeah um, in, in really giving feedback that is personalised. Mm. Yeah. Um, maybe we will move on to the next segment, uh, which is actually the Q&A segment for our teachers. Um, we are opening up the pigeon hole for the Q&A. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to post them on the Q&A. If not, if not, it's um, okay, we will continue with the future of SLS because it sounds like something very exciting. There are so many responses on it. Hmm. Ah, I wish gamification on SLS will have interface like deck toys and booklet. My kids love them. Yeah, I think teachers also really like booklet and deck toys. So um, what we can suggest is you can actually embed these tools within SLS because um, one thing I would like to really recommend is that when we put everything on SLS, it really eases our workflow because we don't have to manage so many different um, tabs, we don't have to manage um, like a lot of different platforms. Yeah, and so that's going to really help us lower that kind of cognitive load um, that we have as already very busy teachers. Yeah, so that's just um, something for your consideration.
there will be holograms. So I do see this recurring theme on um, metaverse coming up on the pigeonhole, which I, yeah, which I think um, is something that we can all relate to. Uh, definitely something we will want to consider in the far future. Mm. Ah, I see that there are some new answers now. Um, SLS makes the screen really small, not friendly. Develop the features for gamification instead. Um, so actually, when we embed things on SLS, um, it does uh, have size constraints due to the iframing, but you can always um, click uh, the open in a new tab window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. yes, and it will be on full screen and the answers will still be saved uh, even though it is in a new window. So I think that should help to... Uh, resolve that issue of having a screen that is too small. Mm. Yeah. So, so a gentle reminder, if you do have any questions for the teacher, you can access the pigeonhole um, and feel free to ask the teachers um, any questions that you may have. Yeah. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, so with COVID, lifted and more face-to-face -face activities happening, um, would our teachers still consider using SLS and how would you adapt it then? I think maybe for my case, I mean, we can be there physically at the site, mm. but when it comes to, we can always uh, pivot to SLS instead of a pen and paper um, mm. um, task. Yeah, mm. so I'm, I'm sure like SLS now, they allow us to have the PDF, the print-friendly yeah. yes. layout, that outlook, right? Mm. So we can always use that and, mm. and it's possible mm -hmm. even mm. with face-to-face -face, uh, mm. site I mean, next, I mean, when they go out for learning journey, if mm. they are at the location mm. physically, they can, we can still use it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But of course, uh, we just got to be more mindful about, you know, like advising the students uh, to be very careful with the devices so as not to, you know, uh, mm. prevent from loss of IT the loss of devices and everything. But mm. that aside, I think it's, it's still possible for mm. us to leverage on SLS. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think that SLS will be a good platform for students to uh, write down their journal and also their reflection as well after the, the learning trip. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So actually what Ms. Surya said um, reminded me of a point is about using technology or even uh, using SLS. So I think when we talk about using EdTech or using SLS, we are not just talking about using it traditionally for um, perhaps just delivering our lessons, but even using tech to enhance the learning experience, like printing the worksheets from SLS. It's still, we are still harnessing um, EdTech to help us in our lesson flow. So there are many different ways to think about using SLS um, to support our learning, um, not just in not just in a typical way that we would see it. Mm. So, yeah, I think you're right. Um, perhaps if we are worried about <laughs> students losing their devices, right, yeah. the print-friendly worksheet yes. um, function actually yeah. does help a lot. Mm. Mm. Moving on, um, how do you cope or keep track with the changes in SLS? Oh. I think this is for the teachers to answer. Oh, yeah. Uh, for my school, uh, the ICT department, they are quite... Uh, Mm. Um, how do I put it? Uh, we always keep up with the changes. I mean, we are we focus quite a bit on professional development. Mm. So we do have uh, occasionally we do have s sessions uh, where we actually uh, are updated with the changes in SLS. Mm. Uh, so one of the staff, will, uh, one of the teacher will will help this section, and then she, he or she will actually do a sharing mm. of of what has. Uh, evolve or change in, in SLS to keep us uh, mm. updated on the changes. Mm -hmm. And we really do appreciate that because I think when we are just buried with all the other work that we have in school and, and such such sessions is very useful. So we actually use it as our uh, um, professional development sessions. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah, We call it like three sessions in our, in our school, like mm. using technology to enhance our our, our teaching. And yeah, mm. So one of it is besides introducing other, other ICT tools, we also uh, focus on 
uh, keeping ourselves updated with the changes in SLS. Mm. So, so apart from SGL, SGLDC Facebook, where we also get updated, mm, mm, or mm. even the SLS site itself, mm, mm, we actually, uh, one of the, our teachers who are um, um, in that certain department, ICT department, they actually help us to also keep us updated with a lot of changes. Mm. Yeah. So I imagine having um, that kind of um, support yes you know from from perhaps the the middle level yeah. it, it does help to um onboard teachers and also help teachers to really get along mm. with the changes mm. 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 Uh, how about how about si Hui? Uh, for me i really appreciate all the bite size uh, sharing in sgldc forum mm. i think by the admin team they have this uh, short video to introduce the new feature for for the teachers mm. so every time i actually got excited with the new feature i will go and watch the video and also read the poster shared by the sgldc team then i think most importantly is that uh, we ourselves need to do the uh, need to try out to design the lesson using the new feature i think mm. hands-on is very important mm. not only for the students but also for the teachers as mm. well mm. so mm. that we know uh, how to design the lesson using the new tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for my school, like I mentioned, if we are learning together as, um, um, you know, all teachers are together learning, I mean, learning together, I think mm -hmm. you also encourage one another to give it a shot, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. you yourself doing it. So when we have someone to do together, I think it, also, it also motivates us to be uh, updated with all the changes and, and, and trying mm -hmm. our best to uh, use what has be introduced in SLS and, mm -hmm. and implemented in our future lessons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it does sound like having a community, community yeah. of support, mm -hmm. whether or not mm -hmm. it's um, in school or whether it's SGLDC or even mm -hmm. perhaps your own um, learning circles. That yep. when when knowledge is shared, it mm -hmm. does it does help a lot, and perhaps it even reinforces that type of learning okay. that that we want to uh, you know achieve. Mm -hmm. um, we have time for I think one last question, and that question is from me. Okay, oh. sure. <laughs> so um, I I do wonder about um, your students' response to your virtual learning journey. So I think I think Sue mentioned that her students really liked it, but I think. I also am curious about the whole process, uh, like from mm. stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Mm. How did your students react, and and also how did you um, manage their expectations when it comes to a virtual learning journey? Mm. So because students, I think when they hear "wow, go to Hong Kong" or you know "wow, go to to to, to Singapore River," it sounds very exciting. Yeah. But we do need to manage that kind of um, expectations as well. So how did you actually do that? Okay, for my students, right, they were really excited, you know, right, on the day itself, uh, for my P5, Primary 5, mm. I actually organized this learning trip for them two weeks ago. So on that day, uh, that morning, one of the students approached me to tell me that, Miss Lau, I forgot to bring my passport, how? <laughs> 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 yeah, so I think is, yeah. Actually, I, I like the, their engagement and also their assignment uh, throughout the trip. They will ask a lot of, uh, they will ask many questions okay, to the tour guide and I think uh, that also show that they are learning and they are uh, quite excited about the learning journey as well. Mm -hmm. So I think most importantly is that teachers need to chunk down the activities so that uh, the students can follow and also uh, it's good for us to plan earlier because for virtual learning trip, I think the time is also one of, of the consideration. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I have to agree with uh, Tsuhui when it comes to time management and mm -hmm. having to plan a particular lesson involving, especially for mine, is because we are involving uh, the to student ambassadors as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, from the recording, from the post post production and everything, mm -hmm. and then after that, uh, so for me it's like I have two groups of students. So the student ambassadors themselves, mm -hmm. and also the primary four students who will be going through that learning journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for themselves, they are excited because they they have the opportunity to to uh, to implement the skills that they learn, and at the same time, so learning a little bit more about. Um, the civic district, how they can share their, their what their findings and everything. So that's one group. Uh, of course, they look forward to to see the responses from their yeah. you know fellow schoolmates. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, because usually uh, the target the, the the target audience is 
when it comes to school tour, it's always been adults. But this time around, it's like students of, mm -hmm. of, their, of their age. Yeah, so probably they look forward to that. And the second group is definitely the, the students, primary four students themselves, who's mm -hmm. going to, who, who actually went uh, for the learning journey. And of course, it's not like usually when it comes to learning journey outside, it's always been adult uh, mm -hmm. like tour guides. Mm -hmm. like, so this time around, it's, it's actually again their, their fellow schoolmates and, and to be able to learn from a peer to peer. Sometimes we always feels that sometimes peer to peer learning is also quite impactful yes, right yes. yeah so so they also look forward to to see you uh, know um, their friends appearing in the video yeah. you know uh, so and it kind of also motivate them to listen and and and, and attempt the, the the questions after mm. yeah so all in all i think the whole experience of uh, this virtual learning journey was quite positive from mm. from the students mm. yeah so uh, we i mean from for for myself we hope to seek more opportunities like this mm. yeah well, thank you thank you both <laughs> for your for your answers um so i think to wrap up i have learned a lot from both teachers you know about using as well as really to help the students to discover more beyond the classroom and also i think i have learned a lot about you know, pulling together different ideas, um, different websites, different tools and actually parking them all on mm -hmm. SRS itself um, to, to really ease the workflow. And I also do appreciate that, you know, our, our hearing that, you know, our teachers have um, very strong support in using SRS um, back in schools. So um, we've actually come to the end of this spotlight session and we would like to invite you to let us know what you would like to see in the next spotlight session. And um, right after this, we will be showing you a QR code which you can scan. Um, do let us know how we are doing um, for the spotlight sessions. Let us know what you would like to see in future. And uh, with that, thank you very much for joining us today. We will see you at our next spotlight session. Bye-bye.